What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. Hope everyone's doing well and I hope you enjoyed today's video because we are going to dive through a bunch of recent updates for Casper. We're going to run through a bunch of information, so huge props to anybody that watches all of this one. So first up, we had an AI webinar with Casper Labs, IBM, Watson X, and Gartner this month. I tweeted out the YouTube link and I will link it in the top of this YouTube video description if you want to watch the entire demo. So this is regarding Watson X. This is IBM's AI and data platform and highlighting Casper's AI platform temporarily called Brave AI, standing for Blockchain Reinforced Adaptive Verifiable Explainable AI. They run through a demo showing the importance of Casper Labs and blockchain technology with AI to actually complement it to allow you to do better versioning. Now AI is going to be huge, but generative AI alone is going to be one of the biggest market movers I think we've ever seen. So this demo is done with an example in the insurance industry and showing how leveraging blockchain with AI can help you actually make sure that everything still operates, that you have a track record, it's tamper proof, etc. What kind of uh, up and running projects did Casper Labs and IBM already work on together? Uh, Sham, Renal, I think that's probably another one for you too. Obviously, IPW that we talked about. There are two or three others that we are working on that are large projects. Unfortunately, we can't discuss them publicly until, you know, those entities are uh, okay discussing it. You know, when it comes to PR and publicity release, we don't like to jump the gun. And then, of course, on Brave AI, we've been working together for a few months. So this was not, this didn't start because of, you know, the executive order or anything like that. We, we actually started on this months ago and, um, you know, been very glad to have IBM as thought partners on this. Next question. The provenance uh, of an LLM training data set would consist of trillions of records conservatively. How are you solving for that? Uh, I'll pose that to the group. Renal, I know you have a perspective, but uh, Heather Sham, let me know if you'd like to jump in as well. It is true that there's large swaths of data. And what's very important to note is blockchain can act as a reconciliation of, for that without replicating the data itself. I think there's this false notion that Oh, to make the data tamper proof, you have to store it all on the blockchain. You don't. You just need to store the reference. You need to store the hash. And if it's ever been tampered with, the hashes are never going to match. And so you know something was corrupted along the way. So blockchain is actually an excellent tagging system for large, large swaths of data without having to replicate the data itself. This is further augmented by hybrid systems where if you're maintaining your own Casper infrastructure, you know, of course, it relays to the public network to get the auditability and decentralization. You can basically set the mechanics on how the data reconciliation occurs. But just to be clear, there's absolutely no requirement to replicate the data twice to get all the benefits from blockchain. You just have to be really smart about how you create the tagging and hashing system to govern AI systems while being incredibly cost effective. On top of that, the Casper blockchain is hybrid right out the gate, meaning every instance of a private Casper blockchain is the exact same software as the public blockchain, just configured specifically for your needs. Therefore, you get the benefits of the public blockchain, immutability, full decentralization, etc. However, if you have internal data management policies and with AI, you're managing a lot of data, you can get the best of both worlds. The best analogy here is really what happened with cloud computing. Everyone thought, hey, cloud computing is never going to take off if you allow on-prem as well as cloud. On the contrary, allowing the hybrid system of on-prem plus cloud allowed companies to mix and match and get benefits from both, massively increasing the usage of public cloud systems. And ourselves and all of us on the call feel the same thing is going to happen with blockchains as well. Moving on, the second thing that blockchains give and Casper gives really, really tightly is strict serialization. For any version control system, if you want to diagnose a problem and roll back to a previous state, you need very, very strict serialization. One of the big differentiators at Casper is the fact that we have no block reorganizations and we have no orphaning in our system. So as a result, you always know that actions in block 102 happened after block 101, which as you can imagine is incredibly important if you're creating a versioning system that is very, very dependent on the sequence of events. Other thing that's very, very important is that in the Casper system, everything is highly automated. One master smart contract can service several different companies on the exact same platform. 
such as Watson X governance. Our smart contracting features include things like governance on upgradable smart contracts. And so the master smart contract can always be modified, something that we uniquely support. So as a result, the combination of these three things makes an excellent reconciliation layer for what's next and other governance platforms. Moving on, let's look at AI and blockchain in practice. So healthcare is one industry that's incredibly important for gen AI models. If you think about gene sequencing or protein sequencing, these systems are used regularly. As you can imagine, the amount of training data that goes into these systems is gargantuan. Therefore, a version drift or a model drift can have tens or hundreds of millions of dollars of consequence. Having a great version control system fixes that in a jiffy. With supply chains, all routing, inventory management are highly managed by AI bots today. Hallucinations, drifts creep in all the time. And right now, retooling those systems is incredibly important. I won't go into too much detail on insurance because that's actually the example we're going to show on our live demo. Before going into the live demo, though, I would like to hand over the presentation to Sham Nagarajan, who's an executive partner at IBM Consulting, to talk about what we've built together and the capabilities of IBM's consulting practice, both in AI governance as well as blockchain. All right. Thank you, Mrinal. That was uh, pretty convincing on... Uh you know, blockchain and the use of it in AI governance. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. We have the gentleman from IBM. He's on Hedera's website, works actively with Casper Labs, works actively with a variety of companies in IBM's ecosystem on Hyperledger Foundation. And Renal, the CEO of Casper Labs, makes a great point about the hybridization of on-prem cloud and cloud storage overall and how it led to better adoption of the public networks and how it can lead to better adoption of public crypto networks as well. And just to talk about Jenny AI or generative AI and why it is huge and it could be one of the biggest industry things we have seen in a very long time. ChatGPT is just one single example. There could be better applications in the future. They currently have over 180 million users. It took five days for them to surpass 1 million users. They get approximately 1.5 billion visits per month. So ChatGPT went from zero to 180 million users in essentially a blink of an eye. It took Facebook about five years to reach that in Twitter or X about six years. So Casper Network is working in healthcare, supply chain, insurance, a variety of industries, and you can leverage Casper's network in hybrid nature for AI governance. And we don't know which ones, but there will be insane crypto projects in the AI sector, even stocks of companies that are AI-based are going to absolutely explode. Projects like BitTensor or Tao, TAO, could be a huge winner in the future. This is not financial advice because nothing is guaranteed, but it is so incredibly interesting. And Dread Bongo on Twitter is one of my favorite people that has covered BitTensor for over a year, with the vision to create a pure market for artificial intelligence and machine learning. An open source repository of machine intelligence accessible to anybody to learn and build different AI models from. We have Fetch AI, another project. It did very well from its last March 2020 low, doing like a 150 or 160x from its low to its top. I remember going over this one back in 2020 and my mind was blown. Unfortunately, I didn't hold. I was chasing other things. I watched it absolutely rocket and it's done very well this year. And Tau, for example, is under a billion dollar market cap. With success of AI, actual adoption and winning applications, anything is possible. All these AI cryptos, AI stocks could reach dozens of billions of dollars in the future, if not even higher. Last cycle, we saw Cardano reach a $99 billion market cap, Doge, a meme coin, and thanks to Elon, go over a $90 billion market cap, Solana, $77 billion. So we've never seen enterprise-grade utility, specifically in AI. We have no idea what's possible. Okay, so we get the gist about Jenny AI and it being a huge opportunity. Let's talk about some other use cases and catch up. So we know IPWE, a Casper Labs partner on IPWE.com. As you scroll down, you can see Casper Labs listed alongside Siemens, Toshiba, IBM, Deloitte, etc. They have over a thousand members and the initial deployment of 25 million patents whenever it actually goes live should be anywhere from 7 to 10 billion dollars in total value of 25 million patents. I'm watching IPWE's different contracts and cast with Block Explorer seeing if it's going to be the new CEP 78 standard. The last time they minted or did a test was 24 days ago. We can also track all of the patents on Scansper.com if you click the IPWE deployment. So they say the real contract will use the new standard. I'll believe it when I see it, but I am going to be tracking this, waiting for any type of deployment. Now in past videos, we have shown that Casper Labs is working with Siemens to no surprise and also Verizon. 
Now in this patent deployment, if it's seven to $10 billion in aggregate value, what is the total value of IPWE's patent portfolio for their 1,000 clients? It could be measured in the billions, dozens of billions. I don't imagine they're putting seven to 10 billion or their entire patent portfolio connected to Casper's public chain for security right out the gate. So I assume there's a lot more money on the table. I wanna see this deployment go smoothly and add a lot of value. IPWE has patents for companies like Nike and Toshiba. So we have IPWE sharing. This group, I don't know how to pronounce it, I should actually just look it up. And then Siemens Energy have joined the first ever ESG smart pool as founders. We've shared months ago Siemens highlighting Casper Labs for enterprise use cases over at Blockchain Hub Davos. And Verizon back in 2022. So Verizon and Siemens, even Siemens Energy, are all Fortune 500 companies. And in the past we shared how big the patent portfolio of Siemens is for Siemens Energy. And shared by this gentleman, smart pools enable companies to share the right to license their patents while also retaining IP ownership. It's huge. And if you've watched IPWE's platform demo publicly on their YouTube channel, you'll see how impressive it is. Siemens is gigantic and Siemens Energy is a separate company still measured in the billions of dollars of revenue. Same thing with this group, income over $81 billion in 2022. And really quick before I forget, I also shared this on Twitter of Siemens Energy patent portfolio. And remember that the value of patents worldwide is about 30% of the S&P 500. The S&P 500's market cap is well over 30 trillion. Okay, next up, big shout out to Tokenizer, an absolute must follow on crypto Twitter and YouTube. I love this picture that he made so much that I asked him to use it on my thumbnail, so big thanks. And please ignore my neighbor's dog if you can hear her outside, a crazy chihuahua. So just remember that Casper Labs is working on smart cities. They're connected to BSN, which is huge in China, essentially the hyperledger of China. We've gone over WiseKey and seen them on NASDAQ highlighting Casper, and then WiseSat or Wise Satellites with SpaceX and using Casper's blockchain to track actual devices with IoT. IBM interoperability, another example would be with IPWE, along with bond tokenization between Hyperledger Fabric, the private, and then Casper's public network. In Nucleus Finance, one of the biggest use cases I'm most excited for for the biggest upside, completely separate from AI or supply chain. The tokenization of any financial contract, and they're working with the Actus Standard, one of the largest three data standards in the world. 98% of all financial contracts leverage Actus. And we talk about ISO 222 with different crypto projects, including Ripple the company and XRP. The members listed include Actus and Ariadne, the DTCC or the Fed before the Fed, the European Central Bank, even Ripple's network, RippleNet. Now I did a post on Instagram a couple months ago and I shared and tagged XRP and Casper and people comments that doesn't say XRP. Why would they list a digital asset like XRP or Casper under the members list? A digital asset can't be a member. It has to be an organization or RippleNet or a financial institution or a fintech. So on NucleusFinance.com, as you scroll down, we have the Actus standard, we have Casper and Ariadne Business Analytics. So we have Ariadne and Actus part of the ISO 222 standards body. So ISO is General Financial Messaging while Actus is tokenized asset messaging. And we know that Casper Nucleus Finance attended the Actus 2023 event over in Washington, DC. And then of course, the government of Telangana in India for smart cities. And speaking of smart cities, we have a post by tokenizer highlighting Joel Corrado. So he's highlighted him many times talking about his background at Cisco for years over smart cities. In one of our recent videos, we also highlighted a WEF paper or report that was made in collaboration with Bank Capital and also two writers from Casper Labs. And for anyone that doesn't know, the CEO of Casper Labs used to work at Bank Capital and private equity. And looking at the Casper price chart, a lot of people on Twitter are acting like Casper is sitting at an all-time low price or it's back down to 2.2 cents. Nothing has changed. We're still in accumulation. We haven't had that breakout. Some assets are up 50%. Some are even up 100%. People are asking me if I still believe in Casper. Yes, nothing has changed. I see applications being built. We're still in a bear market. There are assets still sitting at all-time low prices. Just because some assets have gone up 50% or even done a 2x from the low doesn't mean anything. Assets rotate. I know we have exchange listings on Binance, Coinbase, Kraken on the way. We have the IP we mint. We have a variety of applications still being built. We've explained the difference of Casper's VM versus other assets and what that means. You learn quickly on Twitter that most people aren't actual investors. Most retail investors, even some big pages on Twitter, they're emotional gamblers. I saw the same thing last bear market and I'm seeing the same thing this bear market. When QNT last year did a 450% move or over a 5X, everybody was happy. The biggest pages said QNT is going to the moon. And after just pulling back and consolidating for a year, going sideways, everybody calls QNT a scam all over again. There's a lot of people that just flip flop with emotions in this space based on current price. And don't take my word for it. If you don't like Casper, you don't hold it, fine. If you don't believe in it or you want to go after something else, sell it. Do what's best for you. I'll keep covering Casper long term regardless. It is one of my biggest holdings, one of my highest conviction plays in this space over the long term. 
The people that spent last bear market accumulating 2018, 2019, 2020, and just accumulated had to have done fairly well last cycle. Anybody that tried to accumulate an asset as low as possible and actually made an exit plan and followed that or executed it to some degree and took profit had to have done well. And there are some maxis in the space. I do not just hold Casper. I hold a variety of assets. Some are up like Rose. Some are even down like Elgo. I don't like just holding one single asset. It is a big bet. It could work out. It could not. But I like the opportunity. If one of my assets is up, I at least can rebalance or at least put some profits from the winner into the loser. And that's just right for me. And that's my personal preference. We have different assets starting to show signs of life waking up, but we're still in accumulation. It's not like we broke out of these levels, so I'm not screaming, you know, some crazy big retracement just yet, but I am getting excited. I would love nothing more for assets to follow injective, even Bitcoin to follow injective to some degree, break through some retracements, and approach an all-time high price. But I'll believe it when I see it, we still have a variety of assets at lows. It is not like everything is creating an all-time high, Bitcoin is not at an all-time high price, and that is when alts absolutely skyrocket. So unless I see something super bad or I think Casper's going to fail, I'm going to judge its performance during a bull run. So anyways, in terms of smart cities and digital transformation, Tokenizer says this is a market that's expected to grow to over a trillion dollar valuation by 2027. Autonomous vehicles, microgrids, automated public services, M2M communications, that might be machine to machine and smart technologies. And yes, Casper is definitely working with Cisco even if it's not publicly disclosed. I believe Joel was in that paper with the World Economic Forum a week or two ago, and we can see 15 years at Cisco. And we have Casper Network tied directly to Chengdu Chain with BSN in China, and then Telangana Chain and the government of Telangana in India. I have like 10 more tabs open, but let's just finish up with this. Covering the roadmap, I can cover more information in the future. And again, if you think Casper creates another all-time low price, goes below 2 cents, that's fine. If we follow what Rose, HBAR, XTC have done in the past, we're getting back over 5 cents. If we do a really big move, we could even go over 7 cents at that fair value gap. We talked about the importance of on-ramps and liquidity. When I say that I want Casper to be listed on Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, I don't use Gemini. I don't care about Gemini, but I care about it for its liquidity. You have more market makers, better liquidity, leading to better volume. So we'll finish up with this Casper Networks roadmap into 2024. So going over these protocol releases and all of this together is essentially Casper 2.0, but the final components are Condor. So when I talk about Condor, this is essentially Casper 2.0. And you can go to Casper Network's website and go right through this roadmap. All types of very interesting features that we've touched on before. You know, I love XRP for payments. I like Algo. I like HBARs, L1s, but Casper is very unique. They have all types of unique features shared by Tokenizer as well, the CTO of Casper Labs sharing. They allow testing against your production databases. And Casper Network's architecture is modular, and what that means is that different components of the blockchain, because blockchain is made of different components like consensus, execution, and networking, they can be developed and upgraded independently. And there are other projects that are modular, but they're not upgradable by nature. They don't have unification of contracts and accounts. And this modularity facilitates easier updates and maintenance without overhauling the entire system. So super important for enterprise adoption to even be willing to use your network or leverage it to some degree. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A huge thank you to all the hit the like button and I'll catch you in the next one.